Global economic leaders and government types assembled this week in Davos, Switzerland for the World Economic Forum. Business was on the official agenda for most, but the topics for sideline meetings included troop positions and climate change. President Trump opened up another trade front with the European Union, threatening to add tariffs on European imports as France looks to tax U.S. tech giants like Google and Amazon. They have trade barriers where you can't trade. They have tariffs all over the place. They make it impossible. They are, frankly, more difficult to do business with than China. The president continued in his press conference to air grievances about the WTO. The World Trade Organization has been uh, very unfair to the United States for many, many years. And uh, without it, China wouldn't be China. China wouldn't be where they are right now. I mean, China, that was the vehicle that they used. And I give them great credit. And I also uh, don't give the people that were in my position great credit because, frankly, they let that all happen. One of the most contentious issues for the U.S. is the labeling of China and India as developing countries allowing them to use a different set of rules in the WTO. The topic is a frequent discussion point in meetings like this one in Switzerland. A lot of debate uh, from one side, from the other, concerns are expressed. And um, I think this, this issue is not going to disappear. We have to face it. Uh, and how we're going to square the circle is something that we have to figure out. Phase one between the U.S. and China may be signed, but that didn't mean the global economy has stabilized. Officials with the International Monetary Fund said last October the global economy is slowing down, but they described the situation differently. While there are signs of stabilization, the global output outlook remains sluggish and there are no clear signals of a turning point. There is simply no room for complacency, and the world needs stronger multilateral cooperation and national level policies to support a sustained recovery that benefits all. One factor in the North American economy is the USMCA agreement, which left the U.S. Senate this week bound for the White House. Canada's Prime Minister emphasized his hope for the House of Commons approval for the new NAFTA. Passing the new NAFTA in Parliament is our priority. Millions of Canadians depend on stable, reliable trade with our largest trading partners, from farmers in Alberta and auto workers in Windsor to aluminum producers in Saguenay and entrepreneurs in St. John's or in Vancouver. Mexico ratified the agreement reached in 2018, but not the version the U.S. signed off on last week. Attendees to Iowa's Port Congress this week in Des Moines were briefed on trade issues in China, USMCA, and the number one market by value, Japan. And they've been a great customer of ours, um, but once, once the U.S. pulled out of the TPP, um, we, we started to fall behind um, in some of our export competitors. And so securing that trade deal with Japan that, that kicked in on January 1st will, will bring us back to that level playing field. So, so that, that was a big win for us um, going forward too because um, you know, we were concerned that we would start to lose market share there and now we'll, we'll be able to continue to have uh, uh, access to that market. For Market to Market, I'm Paul Yeager.